Coming up on Tech Thing, do not taunt the pet cube. It's got lasers, Aces, Transformer Book, T300G, hands on, smartphone cases, video bandwidth, and why it might be time to dump Chrome for Firefox. All that and more coming up next on Tech Thing. Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. Do us a favor, check out patreon.com slash tech thing to contribute and keep the show coming each and every week. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we make technology behave. Except when it kicks our asses. Oh. It, it, it was, it, don't ask. Oh, I'm sorry that happened. All, all I'm going to say is, remember kids, <laughs> if you got a Raspberry Pi 2, the kernel's got to be rendered for the processor in the Raspberry Pi 2, because uh, if it's yes. not, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Yay headaches. We have a lot of products that have come in for us to review. Yes. <laughs> so a festival was, of products. It, it's a festival of products. So I was pretty excited about this. I think first off, you have the coolest thing in here. Uh, well, yes. I don't know. My thing's kind of cool, too. Well, it's kind of warm because there's a processor <laughs> in here. This is the Asus Transformer Book T300 Qi. I'm going to say mm -hmm. this. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed in reviewing the Asus Transformer Book T300G is how much I like Windows Technical Preview. Um, no, no, no. Well, this is running Windows 8.1. Oh, okay. I did not. No, no, no. Got it. <laughs> I've had some issues with Windows Technical Preview in the last yeah. week after after an update that's caused emotional trauma and pain. Um, but it comes apart. It comes apart. Windows Technical Preview has been fantastic. So this is Asus's latest convertible. It's a two-in-one. Um, uh, and I gotta say, I, I, it came preloaded with Windows 8.1, and I missed technical previews layout immediately. But yeah. hey, Windows Technical Preview, which is actually Windows 10, is going to release this summer. <laughs> so let's talk about this: the T300 G. Um, it's convertible. It's a tablet. It's a two-in-one. It's 1.58 pounds for the tablet, 1.56 pounds for the keyboard. Although wow, probably, pretty close. Yeah, I probably should weigh it. But it's well, one of the first things a friend of mine asked me is like. Okay, neodymium magnets and this crazy burly magnetic switch. Um, from us, oh, will it tip I over? I like those. Well, it's but it's actually very very stable, right? So it's seven point six millimeters thin for the tablet. It's sixteen point five millimeters. Well, still pretty thin. It's thinner than a MacBook Air uh, with the keyboard dock. Um, that metal joint in between the two yeah. is really impressive. Um, like I said, neodymium magnets, the kind mm -hmm. that you don't want to. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm torn between Apparently one Apparently they work. Yeah, they work. <laughs> they really, really work. Um, you know, you can do it attached. You can do it detached. You can flip it around. You can do it in 10 mode. You can make it dance. Okay. And, you can make it dance. And actually, if you buy the uh, <laughs> extended warranty, there's well, if you register within 60 days, you can get an extended warranty, which will replace up to one broken screen, which you nearly saw me get a chance to test out. <laughs> Fanless Core M uh, CPU design, and that's happening with a lot of these. There is no fan in this. I love fanless designs. Intel Core M 5Y1, 1.2 gigahertz CPU. Um, it's peppy. It's not throttled it's down. Peppy. Well, well, you <laughs> laugh, right? But but some of the Core M designs, they're going to vary a lot. Yeah. And if people are worried about the thermals, um, the TDP inside the enclosure, they might throttle it down and reduce the performance. So, oh. uh, you know, this is comparable in performance from the benchmarks I've seen to a last generation Core i5. Wow. Which, yeah. Not, that's, not, that's pretty good. Not this year's Core i5, but like like 18 months ago Core i5. Okay. Um, yeah. The version we had is the the, the more casual version, the casual user version. It's 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you get an 8 gigabyte version max, 128 gigabyte SSD. Uh, both are soldered on the motherboard, so there's no upgrades. Uh, 80211, I want to say BGN. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, a 2 megapixel front mount camera, which is a 2 megapixel front mount camera. The screen actually is really impressive, um, which you'd be able to see if I actually had something interesting up on the screen. It seems like you have the brightness down right now. Um, yeah, I do have it turned down because it's 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 like 300 nits. It feels a little flamethrowery okay. uh, <laughs> at times. Um, it's it's what Asus calls their true vivid IPS panel. So oh. they're like 178 degree viewing angles. This is a 1920 by 1080 p screen. Yes. Um, they do a WQHD version on the more expensive version of this. Uh, the button and the ports are a little intriguing. There's a Windows button. There's volume and power. Uh, power buttons on the top, which takes a little getting used to. Uh, on the port sides of things, there's a USB 3.0 micro B port, micro HDMI, a headphone jack over by the micro USB port, uh, and then all the way on the bottom where the hinge is, is a micro SD what? card slot so you can add additional storage into it, which I think is really, really smart. Uh, that comes with a micro USB to 2.0, or micro USB 2.0 to the micro USB adapter on this, no micro. It doesn't have a USB 3.0 adapter, but it does come yeah. with a 2.0 adapter. They made a big deal uh, when they showed it off to me, the diamond cut design. So it's essentially 
the case has this. It looks nice and smooth. Yeah, well, it's that I'm, metal. Yeah, touch. well, I got like a diamond carbide tip tool yeah. of some kind, but it's basically so they. It's got a really nice feel. Um, it's actually thinner uh, than a MacBook Air or a Surface Three, huh. right? So they they were very proud of that at Asus as well. Okay. They should be, and part of the reason they were able to pull that off is the little tiny ports. The keyboard actually had a really good feel. Um, it's like a 1.5 millimeter stroke on these. Wow. Um, some resistance to them. Uh, it's pretty much a full-size layout. I liked it a lot. If you are the kind of person that needs a backlit keyboard to type at night, you will not like this keyboard because there is no backlight. Oh, no. The trackpad is tiny. <laughs> it's really small by today's standards. Going yeah. to it from the trackpad on my primary laptop took a lot of getting used to. The keyboard... Pretty much got it instantly. I liked it a lot. Um, the keyboard is Bluetooth, which makes things interesting, right? Yeah, so, how does that work? Okay, so you've got the magnetic joint, but you have no actual connection between the keyboard and the laptop. So, um, you know, I got into the habit of, like, tapping the keyboard before I powered machine. up the system, oh. right? Um, it tends to go into standby, standby mode to convert uh, the standby mode to yeah. convert, convert, conserve power. Hmm. Speaking is hard some <laughs> days. Um, it tends to go into standby mode to conserve yeah. power. So you go and you sit down, you're like, and then like, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and then it starts up. Um, Asus says you'll get like 84 hours of battery life uh, out of the Bluetooth keyboard. Okay. Um, but I kept charging it, in part because I was terrified that I was going to not have... So it's really funny. The, the port, the uh, micro SD, or excuse me, the uh, micro USB port on the laptop is over here, and the charging point, charging port... Is that how you're supposed to charge the that's keyboard? That's how you charge it. Unless you want to charge it with an external... Basically, it charges off a micro USB port, right? Yeah. And that's all it does. There's no extra battery in the keyboard. There's no ports in the keyboard. Oh, gosh. There's a charging port. So I tend this to... This really do... bothers me. Well, it's, <sighs> it's not... There's so many elegant things going on with this. Let me, put, let me point this out. There's so many elegant things going on with this laptop, and this is how you charge it. Yeah. <laughs> do not use this as a purse handle. <laughs> um, I'm, I, you know, it's funny, although they feel very similar. I'm going to say the keyboard half feels a little cheap. Yeah. Compared to the tablet half. It sounds hollow. It does sound hollow. <laughs> Basically because it is hollow. It's got the keyboard, the screen, the battery for the mm -hmm. keyboard, and not much else going on inside of there. So if you're used to, like, keyboards with expanded battery life and additional storage options uh, attaching to your tablet, this is not that. <laughs> um, so i got to say... I am in love with the fanless design on this. Cool. Okay. I forget how much... It's nice much... and quiet, Well, right? it's, it's in part because uh, my wife has a, an older MacBook Air, and as soon as, like, a flash video is opening, you're like, because the fan's firing up on that. <laughs> and while I yep. don't really hear the fan too often on the primary, my primary laptop, uh, you know, a previous generation Dell XPS 13, um, this thing's silent. Yeah. It does get a little warm, uh, you know, if you're, like, watching videos for a couple hours, you know, the screen's going to heat up a bit, about 90 or 100 degrees. Um, I like the idea that there's one-year accidental damage protection. Uh, so if you register within 60 days, um, you can possibly, if you fit within all the, the caveats and the warranty, uh, get a free screen replacement. That is really cool. I thought that was really cool of Asus to offer that because uh, that's a pretty big screen. Yeah. Um, the battery life is not the strongest point in this. It's not the worst core M implementation I've heard of. Uh, it's a 32 watt hour battery. There's no extra battery in the keyboard. Okay. Asus has up to eight hours, which I think is going to happen if the screen's turned down and the laptop is idly and you walk away. Um, <laughs> I was typically getting around five hours of use with, with sort of mild typing, web use, okay. you know, copying some files back and forth. Normal use. Yeah, but you know, if you're if you're using last year's laptop and you're getting yeah. ten hours of battery life. That's me. Yeah, this, the, you're gonna you're gonna want to keep your charger nearby. On the upside, um, the charger is tiny and will charge the laptop. I do like that. In under two hours, which is pretty cool. My charger um, is a brick. Yeah, the, it's <laughs> it's funny. There's trade offs here, right? The Yoga Three Pro has the same CPU. Mm -hmm. uh, they throttle down the performance in the Yoga Three Pro, but the Yoga Three Pro, Pro has like I want to almost want to say twenty or thirty percent more battery life in some oh, wow. of the tests. I've seen. The tests are kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, folks that have benchmarked the Surface Pro 3 and the Qi uh, say that the, the 300 Qi is faster. Um, the Surface Pro has roughly a 2013 Core i5 mm -hmm. inside of it. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of interesting things going on. Seven hundred dollars. That includes the tablet, the keyboard, a couple of cables, the power supply. If you want the fancy version with the twenty-five sixty by fourteen forty uh, screen, that's like two hundred thirty-five pixels per inch uh, and eight gigabytes of RAM. It's going to be nine hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay. I think nine hundred should be about right. Even so, that's that's not a bad price under a thousand bucks. I like it. I will say I am probably going to stay with standard laptops for me because mm -hmm. I am constantly creating stuff and it's not as I've, you know, if I was a salesperson, if I was doing presentations, if I was spending a lot more time on planes, the ability to fold this thing back would probably be a lot more compelling yeah. or to use it as a tablet. Um, but I got to say it's clean and I'm in love with the fanless design. It's a clean design uh, except for... <laughs> the purse holder? The purse holder. I'm going to call it a purse holder. Purse Sorry, strap. it looks like a purse holder. I'm going to get an email from Asus <laughs> I do have that. a friend who likes convertible. She mm -hmm. just had one with the screen that just broke on her, so she's looking to upgrade. And this would possibly be something that she could use because she uses yeah. it as both a tablet and a laptop, depending on what kind of task that she's working with. I had no complaints with the Corium processor. I'd like to see more battery life, yeah. but more battery life would mean more battery, which yep. would mean a thicker implementation, which would make it less <laughs> tablet-like. Ladies and gentlemen, you may decide. You may decide. <laughs> Pet cubes with lasers. Yeah. We saw this at CES. Can I share this with you? We did. Yes. We saw this at CES, and I was just thrilled by this thing because I have two cats at home, and I figured I, I want to make them exercise, and I want to make them play while I'm not home because I'm at work all day. So the Pet Cube has an interior uh, laser as well as a webcam, so you can watch your house, and you can also play with them on a laser. It also has a built-in mic, so you can talk to them as well. Cool. So so in my findings, this is about 200 bucks. so it's $199 on their website. Uh, you can get on there, you can play with it. It's very easy to set up. They have mm -hmm. a very simple walkthrough that comes with it, and it's just powered through a little AC adapter that you plug into the wall. And you can set it pretty much anywhere. The webcam is tilted down towards mm -hmm. the floor, which makes sense since this is for pets. Right. So you can't necessarily use this as a security cam unless you're intending to put it really, really far up and then shoot lasers in people's eyeballs. It doesn't work that way. These are <laughs> very work mild that way. lasers. <laughs> Once you have that set up, you simply open up the application on right. your phone. They have an Android and an iPhone app. Mm -hmm. And through there, you can not only share your webcam with other people through their little mini social network, as they call it, but you can also talk to your cats, open up your webcam. You can't move the camera around at all, but you can right. move around the laser. Uh, the laser is obviously the funnest part. I did find it to be a little bit jittery because the motor, it takes a little bit to notice when you're actually moving across the screen. We got a little bit of video of that as well. It's not. It's kind of funny because you know you would move your finger and the laser would. Follow, the laser would follow. And then follow, the cat yeah. would follow, and then you'd hear your voice mocking the cat. Yep. And uh... there's just a little bit of a delay in the audio for the pet cube um, mm -hmm. mic on itself, but you can hear both your cats right. uh, meowing at you, and you can hear yourself back. So it's pretty easy to understand what's going on back and forth. Would Would you pay two hundred dollars for this? It's. It's a very niche product. <laughs> I think it's slightly overpriced, but given the fact that there are other webcams on the market right. currently that are the same price, for example, there's drop cams and things like that, which you can find for 100 bucks right. during like Black Friday sales, but otherwise they're over 100 bucks. then yeah, I would, pay, I would pay 200 for it. Part of me thinks it's amazing, and part of me is like, you know, my cats will go through laser phases with a, la <laughs> you know, with a $4 laser pointer, and, you know, I'll give it to one of the children, and they'll be this crazed, yeah. you know, book-knocking over, shelf-wrecking, dish-smashing <laughs> it, it would be a big waste of money if your cats are lazy, but yeah. my cats are very active, so they enjoyed it a lot, and I feel like if I purchase this product, mm -hmm. it would give me a lot of use out of it. That's just good. because they enjoy it and they need some exercise because seriously, Starbucks needs to lose some weight. And I will say, <laughs> a $200 pet cube, way less expensive than having a 5-year-old or 7-year-old around the house. That's true. To chase the cats. <laughs> cats are much cheaper. <laughs> Tilt wireless charging products. Yeah, so this was another thing I was interested mm -hmm. in because going from a Nexus 5 to right. a Note 4, I missed out on the wireless charging. The Note 4 does not have wireless charging pre-installed. Mm -hmm. You have to buy a separate case for it or you have to buy an adapter. So Tilt is this company that makes all sorts sure. of accessories and one of the accessories they do for the S4, S5, Note 3, and Note 4 is called the View Mate. So the View Mate, and if I can pop off my case on here, I can show it to you. 
There we go. So the ViewMate goes on the back of your phone right over the battery, and then it props on to the little battery connectors at the top and at the bottom right there. Is it like a sticker? It's basically a sticker that <laughs> infuses your Note 4 with wireless charging. So the little ViewMate, this thing only costs like 20 bucks or 25 depending on which phone you have, so mine is 25 uh, But once you stick right. this on here, you can use anything that enables key charging, so Got QI it. charging. So two of the products that they sent me as well to test this with are, and I'll show you these. The automotive mounts. The View Solo and the View Wireless Charger for Cars. So this is the View Solo right here. Ta-da! And it's only 50 right. bucks, so looks still like under 100 bucks. It looks like a coaster. Uh, this I didn't like as much because it has this little cheap thing that you have to line up with your your view mate to actually make it charge so you have to figure out exactly where to set it on your on your coaster to make it charge you know, correctly as, and as frustrating <laughs> you know michael and i tried to build a key charger with magnets in it once and it was the single most frustrating project i've ever been beaten to death by well luckily this makes it a lot easier well yeah no i'm just <laughs> saying like i completely understand why they put that thing there and yeah it's irritating but it's much better than going like Okay, a millimeter this way, a millimeter that way. That's a millimeter true. Oh, there, it's charging. <laughs> okay, keep the cats off the table. I can walk away now. Yeah, so so it works great once you get it set up and you figure out where you need to align right. the little fitter tool. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have it set up and it charges just as quick as any other key charger on the market. So it takes a couple of hours to charge to 100% from zero. So it's $25 for the sticker. Mm -hmm. How much for This the... is 50 Okay. And then the car charger, and this is the last one. This is also wireless charging. This mm -hmm. one is $80, $79.99 on their website. So this is called the View Wireless Charging Car Mount. And this can be used with any Thing, any phone really. Okay. So you can pop it out with this little tool on the top. It's the adjustable. And it pulls out Got these it. little adjustable side pieces. They have nice foam interior, so it keeps your it keeps it, your phone set. It settled. clamps your phone. Yeah, especially if you're going over bumps and stuff right. like you do on California roads. You can't use <laughs> that in California. You can use it in no, California. No, you can't. It's a windshield mount. It's oh, illegal is it illegal? to use windshield mounts in California. <laughs> Oopsies. Well, what if it's down below? If you can find something that will stick to down below. Okay, so I have a little area down below that I can use it on. Ha -ha. Perfect. So you stick it on there with your mount mm -hmm. and with your little wireless charger on the back of your phone, and this automatically connects to the wireless charger. It plugs in with a regular car battery, right. just like you would see in, with any other one. Luckily, this one has a USB adapter with it as well. It's mm -hmm. a little 1.2 amp output on there. Yeah. So this will charge other external items right. as well, so you don't have to take up your entire thing for but just there's, one. Oh, there's no micro USB charger on this, though. That's kind of a Not bummer. on there. No. Oh, that's, yeah, that's... Well, it's for wireless things, so why yeah. would you need it? Because if you have micro, like, if you have USB ports in your car... Yeah. Or, I mean... I want to. I want something. I don't want to plug this into my car. I want to plug a USB cable into my car. And lastly, I did want to mention before okay. wrapping this up that when I put on this view, uh, the Mate, I believe it was mm -hmm. called. Once I had this set up, I noticed there's a little bit of bowing with this case because yeah. it's supposed to snap on and be extremely firm against there. This is the Samsung Flip case that you can Got buy it. from Samsung's website. A little bit of bowing, but it still works like it's supposed to. So oh, if cool. I shut it, it charges through the case. Yeah, so awesome. yeah, it still charges through the case, and it still gives me that nice little window vid window frame for my uh, my screen whenever I turn it on and I close the case. So, still works like it's supposed to, and pretty cool products. I like them. She likes them, ladies and gentlemen. Fun! This is a Life Proof Free. They have the free and the nude. The difference between them uh, is the free uh, has the plastic here, and the nude basically exposes the screen of your iPhone. I've been a big fan of Life Proof cases uh, ever since... Uh, my oldest son drooled an iPhone <laughs> to death while oh, teething no. on it. Um, waterproof is probably overkill for most folks, but f I am a phone killer. Um, so it's really funny. Uh, if you were around for the saga of my early days of my iPhone 6, I could not find a case for it when I bought it. 
So in less than a week, I managed to not only crack the original screen, uh, but to put a really amazing dent, like <laughs> bend in the case while I was had a child on my shoulders and oh was picking boy. something up on a hike. Yes, derp is not even a strong enough uh, word. <laughs> so the case has done a fantastic job protecting my phone. Um, there's fingerprints on it, but the screen is flawless. Uh, what I was kind of surprised by, and, and I've dropped the phone several times. Oh, yes. Because I am an idiot because when it comes to phone. Because you do. Yeah, it you're just not seems to be. an idiot, you're just clumsy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. Um, the downside, though, uh, so this is the back of the case. It's actually sprung a leak. So they used to use a, there's, well, there's kind of a piece of firm plastic or glass over okay. the camera lens. And then the thing over here is the flash cover. And in the process of removing and reinstalling the case uh, three or four times, oh, no. um, the plastic here ripped. So is there a warranty? There like, is a warranty, um, but I have to find the original receipt to make oh, the claim. So oh, I'm in the no. process of tracking down the original receipt, and uh, when I find it, I'll let you know what the warranty process is like. Yeah. I was I was really bummed by this. I mean, I'm kind of half tempted to just glue another piece of plastic inside of this. You know, this is basically a $70, $80 case. Yeah. Um, and I can understand why they did something. There's this sort of very flexible plastic that's that's over the... Yeah, that makes sense. You know, the the... the home button. Do you want to touch it? It feels I, really I weird. I kind of do. Um, but I was kind of surprised Ooh. to find that back it's here. So, it feels thin. Well, but I guess it doesn't really matter if it's just sitting on your home screen. Yeah, well, it's funny. Like, you know, I went to take a picture, and, and the, the, the lens was foggy on the camera, and I yeah. had been on a hike carrying a child. It was like 80 degrees out, and you know, this part of the phone had been towards my body. And so my, the humidity, oh, the yeah. water coming off my body basically <laughs> steamed up the camera lens and the, the, the flash lens. I was like, oh my goodness. And that's when I realized I, I had uh, a major leak in my yeah. case. So we'll see what the warranty uh, uh, is like on that. And I will okay. keep you all posted on that one. Yeah, let us know. I can't, I can't blame a retailer for needing an original receipt. Well, the manufacturer. <laughs> or yeah, manufacturer. I can, but... I, I just, well, do you save the receipt for everything you've bought? I do. <laughs> yeah, because I'm weird like that. Well, I probably have Although all the Although most of mine are digital receipts these them. days, so I don't really need to worry about it. Well, that'll teach me to buy things in a brick and mortar store. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you got a question for us, ask at techthing.com or twitter.com slash techthing. That's yeah. at techthing. Right now, though, I'm going to ask Shannon what's going on with Hack 5 because Darren is lost in the redwoods of the Lost Coast. He is. We haven't heard from him from for days. <laughs> he's, he's way out of range. <laughs> Hey everybody, I host Hack 5 with Darren Kitchen here in the same building, and this week we've got some awesome stuff happening. First off, we had an interview with the Ubico team about Fido and Ubiking, a really cool contest that they have going on, and we're also checking out a low bandwidth way to check emails and even watch videos in your command line, because who thought that was possible? That's kind of awesome. Check it out over at our sister show, hak5.org. Time for our rapid fire round. This week we've got three reasons we've started using Firefox again. What? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Okay, so I left Firefox a couple years ago because Firefox had this memory leak from hell and became incredibly difficult to use. Me too. Now it almost feels like Firefox is less bloaty than Chrome. It's kind of hard to tell, right? Because if you look in, you know, it's just like Control Alt Delete, Task Manager. <laughs> Chrome has a separate sort of listing for every single window and extension. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you have a zillion sort of entries for Chrome in the task manager. So the only way you're going to be able to figure out how much of your resources it is consuming is by totaling all of those individual uh, elements up. Um, I don't think it's trying to hide the bloat, but it does mean like if one Chrome tab crashes, it doesn't take yes. out everything else you're doing. Here's the thing, though. Firefox has changed so much since I walked away from it a couple years ago. Last year, major new interface uh, design, way less memory consumption, and a faster startup, and I'm really liking it. Because if, you know, if you left Firefox running a, few, you know, a couple years ago, it would eventually take over your machine and ruin your life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it doesn't do that anymore. Yes! Okay, so log in. You can actually use Firefox to sync your history and stuff across multiple machines, just like Chrome. There's cool. also customized mode for toolbars and personas to customize the kind of layout and so many extensions. By the way, did somebody ask for a search box? Yeah. What is a search box? Yeah, well, you know what? There's a search box in Firefox still. Some people say, you know, that's just an antiquated sort of browser uh, design that really they should walk away from. But I'm kind of really digging. Like, don't get me wrong, okay? You know, Chrome, click, in the address bar type of searching. 
Sometimes it's nice to have a separate search box where it's not trying to turn the three letters you've typed into to a 17-page URL from an Amazon.com <laughs> link from three years ago. Yeah. Yes. By the way, open source? Come on. I'm okay with open source. <laughs> I kind of have to agree with you. I just installed Firefox after like two years of not using it because mm -hmm. I've been on Chrome, and so far it's looking pretty good. It was able to sync over all mm -hmm. of my bookmarks and all of my information over from Chrome, so that's awesome. Well, all browsers try to suck the information. They out try, of but this one install. actually did it, and it successfully. did it successfully, so I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> I'm just saying, and like I said, it's open source. I like open source, and I like the fact that they're working really hard on security, and of course, much like Chrome, lots and lots of updates to keep things hopping on the Firefox front. I like the regular updates. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I may have just taken Shannon from the Chrome lifestyle to the Firefox lifestyle. I'd like to challenge you to check out Firefox for yourself. In the meantime, do us a favor. If you got a question for us, ask at techthing.com or hey, like us please on facebook.com slash techthing. We got one goal here at Tech Thing to make it an amazing show each and every week just for you. And if you like it, well, do us a favor, support us. Go to patreon.com slash tech thing. You can donate however much you want per episode, and every little bit counts. Got a nickel? We could use it because, hey, boy, health insurance is expensive. We have lots of goals. Mostly, though, we want to make the show for you each and every week, and you are the people that make that happen. Do us a favor. It's okay if you can't donate. Just share the show with your friends and family. Subscribe to our RSS or YouTube channel and share the word. Thank you so much for supporting TechBank. Got a great email from Joe. He writes in, can you do a comparison of how much data each of the various streaming services uses? Is there any real difference in the number of bits sucked down by using Netflix or Amazon Prime streaming or iTunes or whatever? Data cap sucks. Pound. Obvious statement from Joe. I wonder <laughs> um, if Joe's... That was a hashtag. That was a hashtag, sorry. <laughs> pound is still, even if it's a hashtag. In any case, pound number, hashtag. Hashtag, obvious statement. Well, the worst data caps I've ever heard of seem to be in Australia. Yes, oh my gosh. Um, which, I feel so bad for you guys. And, and I understand a lot of you would like us to do this sort of 320 by 240 super light version of the show. And I appreciate that you don't have much bandwidth. I would suggest, though, is one, wait, because some Australian ISP will start... Uh, pirating our show, putting their ads in it, and giving it to you without your bandwidth cap. That's what happened to us at previous uh, shows we worked on. It's okay. It's okay. Because if people, you know, if two oh. episodes, if two episodes of Tech Thing wipes out your data cap in Australia, get it how you need to get it. But check <laughs> out the audio version, which we have links up to on the website at techthing.com. We also have RSS links, and you can search for us inside of iTunes. There's just lots of ways to get the show. And rumor awesome. has it, I am working. On a Roku plat, like a, like a little Roku. What? Plat. Yeah, I'm a developer now. Oh my gosh, developers, developers. Yeah, you want to laugh developers. hard? Call me a developer <laughs> around anybody who actually a knows me and has developed a product. They will howl and they will fall on the floor and they will laugh more. All right, I'm going to answer Joe's question. Now. You should answer Joe's question because we appreciate that you wrote into us. So <laughs> there is actually minimal difference for each of the different streaming providers. So right. I checked out the ones that I was able to get information on because apparently a lot of these people don't like to share this kind of information. So you kind of got to figure it out for yourself. <laughs> so first off, we have Netflix. They just happen to be super user friendly in this regard with a whole page right. ded dedicated to how much data you use for an hour long show in different formats. So for example, if I had a low format show or a low, uh, low data usage show, mm -hmm. it would be 0.3 gigs per hour. Their SD format would be 0.7 gigs per hour and high quality, which is basically HD, is 3 gigs per hour. Right. So quite a few gigs or 7 gigs for ultra HD. Also, you can set it to auto adjust too and your settings if you don't have a data cap or your data cap's really high mm -hmm. you can just set it to auto change depending on how much bandwidth you have three gigs for an hour for like 1080p seems pretty normal 1080p yeah. yeah if it was 720p i'd be a little sad be closer to like a gig yeah <laughs> but you don't get as many pixels <laughs> that's true so my testing also showed that amazon prime will stream at 2.5 megabits per second about one gig per hour for a 720p video so Ooh. that's pretty on par with what i've been seeing with a lot right. of these i also asked hulu for numbers since they pretty much don't have any on their site <laughs> they actually did get back to me yesterday cool. so 
So I was very excited about that. So as a frame of reference, they quote, uh, shows in HD will be using 11.3 to 24 megabytes every 60 hmm. seconds. In standard quality, we'll only be using 7.5 megabytes every 60 seconds. Did you do the math on that? I did. So Good. that calculates out to 678 megs for a 1440 meg, two 1440 megs per hour for an HD show, right. which is 1.44 gigs, and SD is 404, 450 megs per hour. So about half of that. That makes sense. It does make sense. Let's get back to that gig an hour for 720p. Yeah, again, hmm. a gig per hour. So iTunes, this was the last one that I was able to test on my own computer at home. That one used about one gig per hour as well for downloading their movies from the iTunes store. So to sum it up, Netflix allows customization, mm -hmm. Hulu uses less data, and Amazon and iTunes tied with about one gig per hour for each of those. Right, and it's funny because so, if you have a 1080p, much what I was expecting. yeah, no, it's funny. If you have a 1080p television, I would highly recommend it. If you don't have a data cap, make sure you're getting a 1080p stream. If you can yeah. get one, it'll make a difference. Um, sort of, you know, detail and color fidelity. That was, that's what kind of blew my mind away when I finally got to do some direct comparisons between Netflix HD and Blu-ray players is oh, how cool. much richer and detailed the Blu-ray was compared to streaming. Now right. you got to buy a Blu-ray, a rental Blu-ray versus Netflix, but uh, it's something to think about. If you if you want to really show off your system, go buy a Blu-ray. I'm just saying. Blu-rays are so pretty. They are pretty. Hey, we also got some Twitter tweets. Twitter tweets. Twitter tweets. <laughs> so our first one is from Luton Nicholas. He tweeted, how do you get a VPN on your Raspberry Pi 2? Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. Pretty much How the big? same way I got the Volumio audio file music player running on oh, my Oh, that's cool. You download a distro, you install the distro uh, on a micro SD card, and you boot the Raspberry Pi. You're done, right? I kid slightly, actually. <laughs> um, go check out uh, readwrite.com. There's a really cool guide up on readwrite.com. Start with part one, which is building a Raspberry Pi VPN. Part one, how and why to build a server. It walks you through setting up OpenVPN on a Raspberry Pi, at least once you've downloaded Noobs and installed Raspbian. Okay. Uh, and installed, you need a static IP address. And go to the link and show notes to get the link and learn more. It's a really, really nice article up on ReadWrite. Um, also, by the way, since I mentioned it, volumio.org. That's the site for that super cool audio distro for the Pi, yes. which is already compiled for the Raspberry Pi 2, if you want uh, to play. And I was actually... You know, they basically, they have, a, it's, it's cool. Just if, I'm kind of obsessed with this because he walked into my office and he was like, <laughs> hey, go to this site. And I was like, okay. Volumio.local slash. Yeah, so I put it in the site and he's like, play some music. I'm like, okay. And then it starts streaming out to somewhere and right. I had no clue this was going on. Well, I was like, what did you do? My old amp and speakers are in the warehouse and, you know, we were plugging things into it, you know, like walking a phone over to it or an MP3 yeah. player. And I was like, wait That's a kind minute. Of well, it's funny because Volumio. Because you have to walk. Well, if you if if you have the paid <laughs> version of Spotify, you can actually stream Spotify at like three hundred twenty eight, uh, yeah, like three hundred twenty eight bit um, to the uh, Volumio installation. That's plus, cool. it'll play your USBs. Plus, it's just it's fun. Mm. It's fun, and mm -hmm. it's a good way to use one of the umpteen USB DACs I have <laughs> floating around my lifestyle. Jubilee tweets at Tech Things saw your Ghostry versus Unblock piece. The former also has some profit questions around Ghost Rank. Thoughts on Privacy Badger by EFF? Yes. Question mark. So many thoughts. So I have tried <laughs> Privacy Badger. Uh, that one is made by the EFF, and it's a competitor to the other extensions right. that we mentioned in the show uh, a couple weeks ago. But this one doesn't have the same business model that the others have. It's right. nonprofit. They also are made by EFF, so you know that it's respecting the your Electronic privacy. Frontier Foundation. Basically, yeah. they battle in D.C. and around the world to try to make uh, the Internet be free. We, we love the EFF. We like them a lot. So it's very easy to use. Privacy Badger enables. Uh, different colors, red, yellow, or green, to signify if a site is using trackers, if it's not using trackers, or if it has minimal trackers that you can turn on and off. It works really, really well, and I actually ended up naming it as one of my top five back on Techzilla. I think it was a Techzilla Byte last year in May. So if you want to check out, out that episode, I'll put it in the link in the show notes. Yay. Good times. Good times, people. You know what else is a really good time? Subscribing. Yes. Subscribe to Tech Thing and get it in your face each and every week. You can get the information on every show episode that's up on techthing.com or go to youtube.com slash techthing. You can also subscribe to at techthing, facebook.com slash techthing. Right. 
And, and that's the, also where you can share any tips that you might have for our audience as well, because you guys have awesome answers, yes. awesome questions, and of course we want to hear from you because this show is all about you guys. There's tens of thousands of you and two of us, and eventually <laughs> we have to sleep. And hey, <laughs> before we go, I oh. just want to make sure that you're backing up your system and your phone because we did a whole episode about that. So make sure and go do it right now. And remember, once in a while, you got to do something analog. And you know what my pick is this week? Pet a cat? It's playing a card game night <laughs> with your friends. Because I know you guys have friends. You should check out Magic the Gathering. Your husband got you into magic? Yes. Are you going to the mall and playing magic at the food court? No, because some little 12-year-old will kick my <laughs> and that would make me very angry. But My bum. Your butt. <laughs> kick your butt. He would kick my bum. So you're now a magic enthusiast? Kind of. So I really magic, like the gathering. green deck yeah. with elves. It's fine. What's a green deck? It's the green deck. There's different colors for all the different decks. Oh my gosh. I could go into like an hour-long spiel about magic now. <laughs> I better not do that. <laughs> That's uh, a very special episode to come in the future. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. That. We can just leave it on. You can hear the cursing and the rage. <laughs> All the anger. Anger! Do you have uh, Firefox on that machine? Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. If you'd like to keep the show coming, please. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't just me that heard that. Nope. <laughs> and A Block. A Block, and there's more than meets the eye. A Block, and yeah! I really should. You want to play magic? I'll teach you how. No. Ooh, that's a fun one too. I need to download that. So cool. We've been doing a lot of dominoes in my house to help shame us oh. like, with a spot recognition on math. <laughs> it's awesome. Are you still recording? Yeah. Okay, good. Hello, everyone. I'm going to teach you how to pull espresso and we'll play dominoes. Hello. <laughs> This is the song. Hello. Oh, have you ever played Mahjong? Yeah. Mahjong is awesome. It's like crack. Yes, it is. Not that Mahjong. we know personally, but it's Excuse totally. Me. It's very addictive. It's a very addictive game. Actually, I think I want to get a go table next, probably before Mahjong. Go from like dominoes, because my, my son can already kick my butt at chess, because my wife's a really good chess player. Um, uh, well, no, it's 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 a. I, I, I want to say it's a Japanese game. I apologize if I got that wrong. The, uh, but it's it's basically black and white <laughs> little stones that are black and white. You flip uh, over, yeah. and it's very yeah. it's it's all about like lining things up Super and then flipping good. ones that yeah, it, yeah. Well, it's, it's well, it's simpler and more insane. It's like yeah. like fewer rules and more potential mayhem. Um, yeah, it's it's you know soccer versus football, set pieces versus just crazy flow. It's totally like just, you know, ethereal use of the intellect to attempt to...